Hey, guess what? We're back. <gasps> what? Where? Why? Yeah, when? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Why is Gamora? Anyway, welcome back to Monster Road Trip. Uh, we're learning things about ourselves and the people. We and meet. others. <laughs> yes. But anyway, Hi, Margo. Yes, hello, Margo. We're going to keep this train a rolling, rolling, rolling. Week four. Oh, it's my turn again. Yep. I don't think we get the Miranda benefits, but that's okay. Which is good. <laughs> you stop losing mind. Okay. Uh, we can go to Space Station. Or we can... The world's biggest potato. Yep. You say potato, I say potato. Uh, that's mine and stamina. We can get some mine. Yeah, yeah. Or do we... We don't care about mine anymore, do we? Uh, well, we, we just gotta keep an eye on it. Our <laughs> soul is our highest, right? Hell is real. Hell is real. Yeah. All right, going to the tape. What's up, Evan? Now, car stops. Yep. Yeah. What? Why is the car stopped? You're driving. And Miranda is riding shotgun, giving you directions. Too bad she's the worst navigator in history. That checks. So, according to this map thing, we should head west to the reach the ocean. It's pronounced west, and again, I'll remind you, we are trying to drive straight into the ocean. But I miss the ocean. I don't like the desert. It's too dry and sandy. It's all the worst parts of the beach with none of the water. I understand, but you can... But can you rant later? Right now we need you to tell us when to turn. Turn? Turn? Oh, that reminds me. Frank, it's your turn to braid my hair. Well, Miranda, that'd be pretty hard to do while I'm driving. I don't think you're really grasping the importance of the fact that I'm driving. Princess, be your guide. I've listened to a lot of the Has Been Hotel soundtrack, and I fucking Charlie like singing up the. Rob is Charlie forever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, this would be the first and last time for me personally. A whole new road, a motortastic <laughs> way to move. No one to tell us no where to go. You're supposed to be telling us where to go! Oh, right, silly me. Frankie, you need to turn left five minutes ago. God damn it, you'd also be better off if Red was distracted so you just drive in peace. But what would distract her? Keep her mouth busy by using the emergency ice cream. I thought that was going to go in a different direction. Give, give her an assignment to write that you will review when you arrive at the next stop. This is I don't I'm any fucking sure. idea. I'll do this one, I guess. An assignment? Brilliant! Father says a good mind must be intelligent in order to outwit the enemies and produce the thing known as propaganda. Propaganda. It's like a panda, but with a panda. We'll, we'll, we'll workshop it. <laughs> well, if Brandon wants to be more intelligent, you sarcastic suggest you write up an essay on the importance of driving safety. Perfect! A topic I have no expertise on. I'll learn a lot and make you proud, Frankie. And she does make you proud, at least in the fact that she is so busy writing you, writing, you get a moment of peace and three mind as you drive. Sweet. Fuck yeah. Looks like we're getting close to our next stop, Mary. Ready to, ready to read as you, uh, read us your essay? Sure. This is The Majestic Metal Chariot, Driving Safety and in Style by Princess Miranda Vanderbilt. Driving safety is very, very important, especially when carrying precious cargo such as a princess. You don't want her to get hurt. That's why the first rule of driving safety safety is to disable all airbags so in the event of a crash, no painful bag will be deployed and bruise the princess's beautiful face. The second rule is to remove all seat belts. They're not even real belts. What pants do they hold? <laughs> not to be deceived by their do not be deceived by their confusing name. The third rule is to always be aware of your surroundings. If any of the cars cut you off, that is high treason! 
In these cases, it's necessary to execute the offending driver. Feel free to crash into them at high speeds to ensure a swift and deserved death. <laughs> well, how did I do? Do I get an A? Uh, how about an A for effort? Really? Wow! I've never put effort into anything before. How exotic. You and Polly share a look that says, Holy shit, someone needs to teach Miranda actual driving safety. <laughs> At least your distraction worked, even if Mary homework was a total negative three hype solution. Aww. <laughs> Behold! The world's biggest potato! So large, so starchy, so rustic. So ripe for the creation of the world's largest plate of French fries. Too bad they said rustic instead of so russet. Yes. <laughs> There's plenty to do besides stare at agricultural marvel. What do you do? What do I do indeed? Coffee, Research potato. Feed from the potato. potato. Benefit from the potato. The fuck does that mean? I don't know. But I'll be uh, doing poly for the next little bit. <laughs> okay. I, so we're not losing mind anymore, right? It, yeah, we're not. Okay. Let's get some stamina going. How could you look at a giant potato and not crave fries? We need to find something to eat. Hey, look! They have a diner built to the shine of the, 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 the potato. Uh, well, ah, it's a long one. <laughs> do you want me to do it? I don't care. There better be at least a vodka on the menu. Oh, no. Welcome to the Big Potato Diner. What can I get you? I love this outfit. <laughs> what hamburger, please? What part of Potato Diner don't you understand? Don't ask him that. He might be here for a while. <laughs> <coughs> Man, these dishes are kind of expensive. Why is this potato stand so pricey? Because we make all our food out of the Big Potato. Every bite is a, big, is a bite of potato history, TM. Awesome! Does that, does that bad potato make really good potato dishes or something? No. If anything, they all taste kind of stale. The big potato's getting a little up there in age. But hey, we have this special section on the menu. The manager isn't sure if it's morally okay to keep selling these dishes so the prices are more competitive. Oh, that doesn't sound great, but oh boy, these prices are low. They're so cheap that you won't even make a dent in your money. Question is, why does that cue look so weird? Which of these dishes will feed you while fucking you up the least inconvenient way? Oh this, uh, my god, the infinite fry. This or... is supposed to be bears, but this is most definitely part of a worm. <laughs> yes, that's going to make a great noise on the mic. Uh, the infinite fry or smashed potatoes? Uh, infinite fry. purposes it's not infinite just try not to think too much about it and stop eating it at some point and you should be fine you start no. eating you gain plus four stamina you chew and Holy chew in any moment you reach the end of the fry but you don't you eat the same fry for one minute then five minutes then an hour then longer there's no end of the crunchy salty thing frankie i'm sorry but it's time for an intervention you gotta stop eating that fry it's unhealthy for you no way! I invested too much time finishing this fry now. I have to see it through. Sucking cost fallacy for the win! Can we at least have some? No! It's my fry! <laughs> you keep eating, but your brain cannot comprehend infinity. Not even in such starchy, simplistic terms. You eventually pass out. You wake up in the car. Polly and Scott threw the fry away and took you here to take care of you, which was nice of them. <laughs> but you're kind of upset because you finally found your true calling eating that infinite fry to completion. Your purpose in life, gone forever. You lose negative four mind. God damn it. In the case you suffer oh, from God. nightmares that make you wake up in cold sweats, losing all starch. Stark! Look at Stark! Look at all Stark, God damn it. Well, that's problematic. Yeah. Oh. Oh. So we get the Simon Soups. It's a super special place, or the circus. Finally, you can be a clown without people noticing. I will go to the soup place. No soup for you. They wouldn't ever take a bite of the potato. Just more soup? Yeah. And remember, I'll stop eating soup. This rundown soup restaurant seems to be years past its prime. It's 
Still, you're hungry. <laughs> you were hungry? You just ate You're hungry. Eating. You didn't get any fries. Oh, that's now. right. That's right. Only Frankie. Only Frankie had Frankie any fries. Still, you're hungry, and the bowl of soup would really hit a spot right now. What's the worst that could happen? Some kind of murderous robot pops out of the shadows to kill you? <laughs> nah, that's way too unlikely and weirdly specific to happen. So, what do you want to do with Simon's soups? Soup time. Celebrate your birthday or work the night shift. All these, all oh, this I can't decide. Like I really want to do soup time, but that sounds hilarious. And this sounds like the, the they're going to reference some horror game probably or movie. And I really want to know which one they're going to reference. Also, what the fuck is going on with the guy? Uh, we're going to we're risking it. We're going to work the night shift. You and your friends walk into the restaurant. It smells like chicken stock with a hint of. Blood? Blood? Of course it's her. Welcome to Simon's Soups, where the broth of childhood and the vegetables of imagination are stirred together to create unforgettable magic. Is this a Five Nights for Freddy's <laughs> dog oh, Of course, we to ask about robot. the no, no hiring sign out front. You could use some extra cash. Of course, it's gonna be Five Nights at Freddy's. Of course it is. <laughs> Work the night shift and the fucking robot jumping out. <laughs> That's right. You're interested in the night guard position? Sure, you're hired. No, that's it. No interview. Sweet. Yeah, trust me, we're desperate. We just gotta sign a waiver first. What's going on with the blood down here? <laughs> oh, I guess she's kind of just covered in blood. Forfeiting your rights to sue Simon suits if a soup peeled animatronic murder happens during your shift. Oh, it's, I just realized it's always been a Five Nights at Freddy's. Simon Sue's Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. Mm -hmm. I think it was actually originally called Freddy's F Fun Time Diner or something in the lore. Uh, could you maybe tell me more about these soup field murders before I make a snap judgment on that? <laughs> sure. Simon Soup. Simon Shafton? By a guy named Simon, Simon Shafton. Shafton. Oh my god. He was a robot assistant and a children's entertainment genius. He also really loved soup and was honestly kind of a psycho about it. <laughs> Shafton. Shafton designed the animatronics to carry out his aggressive soup agenda, meaning they do weird shit sometimes. The company got bought out a few years ago and the new management reprogrammed the animatronics for the most part. But they still sometimes malfunction after dark, hence the waiver. Anyway, the job shares, if you want it, we're, we'll basically take anybody. How many nights can I put you down for? Maybe just one night. And maybe when you said work, you actually sort of meant fool around, not act actual working. Jeez. Don't know these animatronics still used to be murderous, murderous. One night sounds like enough nights. Get the full experience. Six nights at Simon's. <laughs> we are going all out. <laughs> you and your friends show up your first ship later that night. Go to the surveillance room where the soup girl helps you get that get settled in for your first night shift. Your first shift. See this camera? You just have to stare at it all night long and not die. Those are your two main tasks. Just watch your camera and not die? Is this a great job or a bad job? Well, that exactly. That entirely depends on how murderous the animatronics feel. What? Bye. Bully. Are we gonna die? Just a standard thing in most jobs, and we didn't know. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> what? Ah. What's happening? I I missed the it whatever happened. Blinking. It just started the. Yeah, but there's started. something appeared in one of the picture in the picture. Oh, did you did... see the thing flash in the? I was I was watching the outside. I did not, but yeah, I missed it. Oh, it's dead. I think I saw something in that corner. Go check the camera, Scott. Phew! Everything's okay, Polly. The tracks even disappeared. It looked weird and unsettled me, but that's okay, because now they're gone. Oh, no. crap, the Scott, this is not a good thing! Shut the door! I love the fuck, you guys can't hear it, but you shut the door and like the music stopped and went... You shut the door yourself, and just as it closes, you glimpse of a nightmarish vision. Oh my god. Oh, jeez. Want some soup? Polly, hear me out. What if they're legit offering us some soup? I'm sort of hungry. Hey there, pals. Welcome to my show. I'm 
Simon Soups and I'm ready to go. So grab a spoon and open wide, cause me and my friends are coming inside. <laughs> Scott and Polly shut the door so the three of you barricade yourselves in this surveillance room. You spent the entire six nights locked in there. Fun. Working so much during the road trip trains your trains your too hype. Spending those nights keeping the murderous robots in baby doesn't. We lost four mind. Oh no. You oh no, it's too mind. <laughs> but hey, you honored your contract to get plus five money and plus one stamina from the free soup you find in the surveillance room. Okay, we gotta get more mind. Yeah, but we're only we we're, are, we're only five we away from getting good time. money. Yeah. Uh hype, loose stamina, or magic and loose soul. Uh, we need mind. Yeah. Experimental prison. We brought the fun back to prison. <laughs> We've thrown away the key. <laughs> Wild West Town. This town ain't big enough for the two of us. Uh, we'll try this, I guess. Or none of them gives us money, so can't try to like win the last second. Yeah, we'll go to the town. Need mind to think good. <laughs> yeah, I know. We don't. Yeah, we don't. Welcome to the land of six shooters, outlaws, wild stallions, and ten gallon hats. You've always wanted to be a real cowboy, or at least the kind of cowboy they show on TV. And now is your chance. So what are you going to do, partner? Duel at high noon. Visit the saloon. Or visit the horsies. Oh, I think there's like a special horse thing. The horsies it is, then. You decide to visit the horse stables. You're always down to see some cute animals and indulge your inner horse girl. I think they, what it is is they, they drew every character as a horse. Oh, God. Oh, look at Polly. Yeah. Look, oh boy, this one's like me. You can see it as giant and he really loves my head pads. Totally, you can always tell what a horse is thinking when you look into its eyes. They're the big derpy windows into its soul. Like I can tell, this one really wants a bite of my pocket. Do you smell the cannon cookies in there, big guy? Polly Pocket. What is your horse thinking, Frankie? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you look at the eyes of the horse you're petting. At first, you don't see anything, so you really squint and then... You can envision the horse's wants, its desires, the things it craves most in the world. And it craves violence, arson, bloodshed. So much bloodshed. <laughs> you can see it. <laughs> it, Frankie. The horse says with its eyes, Burn down the world. Commit tax fraud. It's your destiny. <laughs> well, what are you for horsing, bro? Why are you still standing there? The horse's eyes demand, Why haven't you committed a tax fraud yet? As your horse overlord, I command you. What's wrong, Frankie? You won't deny this adorable horse its sweet, innocent desires by staying silent, will you? Crap, you don't want to let your friends down, but does that mean you need to do the horse's bidding? You decide to chuck up the horse's disturbing demands to your own weird intrusive thoughts and just pat its dumb head. Do the horse's bidding. Plug yourself to new horse overload and do whatever he demands until the end of your day. <laughs> What do you think? Should I risk the full, full board on the off chance that I don't think it's going to give us mind? I it could cost us mind. I suppose we'll just keep patting its head because oh, okay. it's less likely to lose us mind. Sure. You play dumb, or maybe just are dumb. Who knows? Give the horse a friendly head pat. Whoa! What about the tax fraud? Screams the horse with its eyes. Oh, it was very explicit, but you're committing tax fraud. <laughs> well, yeah, you were. <laughs> but it doesn't have to be tax fraud. If these intrusive thoughts are going to be in your head, can't you at least have to say in things? Fine, no tax fraud. We'll burn out an orphanage then. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Uh, yeah, still going to need to tone it back a little. <laughs> Fine, you can scratch my ears, maybe. Sure, finally we're getting somewhere. Good. I know that I've got pets. We're close enough to burn down an orphanage together. Our friendship will be forged in flames. And we're back to square one. <laughs> you decide to get a hor the horse an apple. and just It's just a dumb horse after all. It's, all these homicidal requests are just your fucked up psyche talking, right? Oh, well, you really aren't good at this horse whispering thing. Can't you see the size of it and want an apple? Yeah, I was getting a clear burn down an orphanage to commit tax fraud message from your horse. Why did you respect its wishes? Uh-oh. Whoops. Uh oh. Caring about the lives of little orphans gives you plus soul. Oh, thank God, just hype. Oh, we, we lost so hype. You're we... willing to commit crime because you have three hype. Thank God. Uh, we're not doing so good. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. I didn't know this, but we didn't lose mine. Okay. We go to a wedding and we get hype or we go to the cult headquarters. 
God, oh, this is get, literally the cult of the lamb, I believe. We get magic or get money. Uh, or get out of the wedding. Okay. And this is the real reason we don't spend we'll a see, s- Vanderbilt sister is Mary, don't just... Oh, You're not the sex driver. Yes. Thank you. N- neither of us have played Cult of the Lamb, so we know yeah. nothing yeah. about it. Ah, uh, weddings, the union of two or more soulmates pledging life and love to each other for the rest of their days. You believe in that true love stuff. If not, at least weddings are a fun place to dress fancy and get drunk. They're, they're also fun to crash, which is what you're doing now. Shh. So what are you going to do? Talk to the runaway bride, catch the bridal bouquet, or speak now or forever hold your peace. Which gives us hype. Yes. I'm going to take a take a chance and that we don't lose mind, but we get hype. It's time for the bouquet toss! You've been training your entire life for this moment, have you? Yes. Oh my god. Ooh. Wow. Holy fuck. Damn, Korea, you really want the, that bouquet. Let me guess, you're anxious to find that special someone and do the do? But I don't have to catch a buffet to do that. Catch a buffet. Bouquet to do that. And here I thought you left your horny ways behind after the monster prom. Nope. Fuck you're no. a horny for life, only because I said so. Which means you need to catch that friggin' bouquet. I don't get it. What does catching bouquet of flowers to do with fighting love? Catching the Brady's bouquet is a tradition. Or er, bride. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever catches it will supposedly get married next. It's nonsense, but it's fun nonsense. It sounds cool. I've always wanted to have a hobby that combined romance and full contact sports. <laughs> I just like how chaotic the whole thing is. Everybody's throwing down the catch some flowers because they really want a bone. It's awesome. I root for you, Kamaria. Don't be afraid to tear a bitch's hair out to get that bouquet. Shit, the pressure's really on now. Only, Not only to catch the bouquet, but to impress your friends, too. You need a foolproof plan to catch those flowers. Think of something. Plant a tracker on the bouquet so it, you never lose sight of it. Those flowers ain't going anywhere. Don't leave anything to chance. It's time to spend wish number one for the monkey's paw. Ask to catch the damn goddamn bouquet. What? What's with this monkey's paw thing? Yeah, it just keeps coming back. We've never picked it. Too many fucking fans with phobia problems. <laughs> like, like yeah. flashback. I guess we'll do the tracker. <laughs> Whew, thank God. Yeah. Well, t- that was our highest money, stat. Like, yeah. You play plus four or plus. Uh, you, yeah, well, four money for a fancy tracker and sneak into the bouquet without the bride noticing, and then get positioned to catch it. The bride tosses the bouquet, and then slow motion, you watch it somersault through the air, only to be snatched by some punks in leather jackets. No. <laughs> what the fuck are all these? <laughs> Um, boy, you, we, were we even invited here? <laughs> we don't need an invitation, says one of the punks. We're the anti-wedding biker gang, notorious scourge of the wedding industry. Modern wedding culture is dumb. People spend so much money on useless shit like tuxedos and bad DJs, that money would be spent on your, should be spent on your rad Harley. That's why we crash weddings and steal bouquets to prevent the spread of l- wedding fever. With this bouquet, none of you could get married. Before anyone could stop them, the bikers right back, hop guys. on their motorcycle and ride off. All hope is lost. Not. That's right. You have the tracker. You and your friends jump in your car and follow the flower's location to the bikers. While Scott drives and Polly cheers you on, you jump into the leader's bike, knock him out, grab the bouquet, and jump back in your car as the bike explodes. (laughs) Hooray! We all worked together and got the bouquet back as a team. Uh, Sure. You return the bouquet and gain plus four hype for your tearing car antics. All right. We're still on thin ice with the mind. Um, yeah, that was that was about twenty five minutes, so we're okay. All right, uh, where are you going? Matt, hey guys, I'm back. What a miss! All right, where where are you going? We had to chase down a, a biker and we exploded. Oh, cool. Uh, I'm gonna go to the noodle stand. Hopefully, get some mind. Yes. And I'm gonna go to the bus stop and talk to my <laughs> Frank is term. Yeah, I still got those pesky worldly possessions, huh? When I traded for some old, some of the weird crap I've got, I've got nothing matters anyway. All right. Um, our car runs on magic, so that's what the gas tank is. I don't know. What credit it's cards, about. money, obviously. Yeah. Just um, fine. 
The postcard's probably mind or soul. Yeah. And then I'd probably hype. Uh, let's let's do the money. Okay. Mind control lessons. Yeah. Magic. That was magic. Yeah. I'm doing your purchase. I remember the first rule of shop club. No refunds? Oh, it's actually never wear underwear on Wednesdays. But that's a good rule, too. Okay. Ah, all right. Change. Okay, so, yeah, here we go. Hey! The, all right, we're... I want to talk about the air people right now. Okay, her sister Amanda, or the treacherous air people. Amanda? Everyone loves Amanda. She doesn't talk much, and that's part of the magic. Like... She chooses care if they were to say something, and so you keep talking to fill the space, and before you realize that you're giving away relevant information and such. It's incredible. I've seen her disarm a lot of people just by standing there, silently smiling. She's the highest priestess in the Mer Kingdom, and it suits her. Everyone has always devoted her to her anyway. I, I wish I knew what she thinks of me, but it's a mystery, as so many things are about her. About her are. Oh gosh, I'm oversharing a bit, aren't I? You were just sitting there, and I started blabbering, and then... Wait, you're pulling a man on me, aren't you? <laughs> Maybe. Gee, <laughs> but see, you just sit there and look me in the eye so intensely, and it's almost like you cast a spell on me. I cast a spell on you. you look now we're you You both smile gently and then spend some time in silence together looking at the stars. Yes. <gasps> yes. So we'll see you guys next time on the next episode of Monster Road Trip. We're finally making progress. For more Miranda. Kind of. I mean, we've been making progress this whole time. <laughs> yeah. Bye, everybody. Yeah.